Okay, we are filming with Fritzy, my Panasonic HD camera, while he's still working. The new one's not in yet, but it should be in today. I am working on reconfiguring my product review swatch book for watercolor paints because I quickly outgrew the binder and I knew right away that wasn't going to work. But I like the size of the binder, so switching to a different smaller binder wasn't going to work or a bigger binder wasn't going to work. I liked what I'd already created. I don't want to do it again. So I decided to make my own and I thought maybe I would bind it with my Zutter. I do have a bind it all. Um, but then it was pointed out but one of my friends um, slash admins and other YouTuber uh, Michelle uh, from Lady Blue Studios and that I should use binder rings and she's not wrong. The whole reason we went to a binder in the first place was so that we could take pages out, move them around, um, put them side by side and that sort of thing. So we're going to use binder rings. I hate them, but we're going to use binder rings. So, okay. That being said, this is one of my covers. This is just chipboard, actually, from the, it's the back piece from a watercolor paper pad. Um, I took some of our leftover watercolor paint, and I dropped it onto a piece of watercolor paper, and then I cut it in half, and I glued it um, to my two front and back covers once I had cut the chipboard to the right size. Then I covered the edges with um, white duct tape, and I thought I wanted to do something fun with the corners um, and kind of protect the corners a little bit. And so I had this idea. I've got this metal, silver metal tape from the hardware store. It's for um, taping up heater ducts, and I cut some little squares. So what you want to do is fold them in half, corner to corner, and crease it, and then fold it in half again. This stuff is it's metal, it's aluminum I think, and it's um, really sticky and, and stiff so it creases really nicely. So you'll get this kind of X shape on your aluminum tape. Then you want to cut starting at about an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch from the fold and angle the scissors in towards the point but don't cut all the way to the, the center point. Do that on both sides and just take the center triangle of tape out and then do it on the opposite side. Like that. Then peel the backing off. Which is sometimes easier said than done. And the stuff like I said is really sticky. Then take it and stick it to the back side lining up the edges of your chipboard just a hair shy of your creases. Wrap these two pieces around to the front. Then bring this front piece down uh, to the front and lay it down and press it with your fingers and then wrap the two flaps around to the back. Rub it down. You can use your fingers or a bone folder. And then with the corner, I've just been doing this and rocking it on my table and just making sure by pushing it down that it's really stuck and you get this kind of a, a corner like this. So I'm going to do that to all my corners and I'm going to get everything ready and I'll be right back. Okay, this might be Fritzy's last video because I'm having trouble getting him to work this morning. Thank God the new camera's coming today. I've got my new product review swatch book finished. I got all the corners on my front and back cover. I punched holes in the two front and back covers and in the pockets that I made. Um, you're really, if you're going to do something like this, you really need to get one of these big crocodile hole puncher eyelet setting things because this chipboard is just way too hard to punch a hole in any other way. This device makes it really easy. Um, and also if your binder rings are kind of loose and, and tend to pop open, which is one of the things I hate about them, um, then take your binder ring right here where it's riveted together and put it on something hard and just give it a couple whacks with the hammer and tighten up that little thing right there, rivet thing, and that should fix it. Um, okay, so I made some pockets out of 12 by 12 cardstock that I had here, and I... Um, made them nine and a half inches high by six and a half inches wide. I scored the 12 by 12 paper with my scoreboard first and then I cut off this little rectangle here that was here and then I folded this flap over and this flap up and then I cut this one at an angle 
and taped it together with some decorative masking tape and we have our pot we actually have a little pocket here and then a bigger one back here and I made two of these one for the front one for the back because there's probably going to be times for sure you want to keep your templates in here but maybe you've picked up pamphlets at your water from your watercolor paint manufacturer or something like that and you want to just tuck them in here until you get a, a chance to work in your book We've got our different sections, and because we have binder rings, if I need to add pages to here, then that's not a big deal, which is why we want binder rings. But also, if I want to take some of these pages out so I can compare them side by side, I can also do that because we've got it on binder rings. We've got our samples section, our color wheel section, our blending section, and I have around 10 sheets plus the ones I already have in here had in here in each section of watercolor paper. I love these pockets that came with that binder, which is one of the reasons I was hesitant to go with a smaller, um, uh, just pre-made binder, because I really love these sheets and they're too big for a regular uh, American mini binder. So I chose to keep them and do this. Um, I put all of the sheet protectors back in here that came with the mini binder. They're con all configured a little bit differently, and I can see them being good for um, just little scraps of watercolor paper and little samples and things that we try. And then we've got our inventory section, and I did go ahead last night and I added uh, Mission Gold and uh, May Mary Blue and I added another pocket in the back. So now I'm all ready to go to continue on with our review of our watercolor paints. And um, I like to keep these rivets to the outside. These binder rings are gonna make me insane. <laughs> Just I can tell you right now they're gonna make me insane. But it, there's no other way to do it. <laughs> but we're ready to work on our other uh, product reviews and swatches. Uh, next Wednesday, uh, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, here on YouTube, we will be live and we will be doing Windsor Newton and Van Gogh. And every week we are going to work our way through the paints that I have. And then when we um, get caught up or mostly caught up, we will be doing going back to the beginning and doing paintings with each one of these paints. Of course, part of our process is doing a little sample comparison painting with the paints, which we will continue to do. Um, but after we're done doing all these different sections in this book, we're going to go back and we're going to actually work in my watercolor journal, and we'll do a page per brand of paint that we have. All right, that's it for today. Uh, if you would like to support my YouTube channel and the free tutorials, uh, my Facebook group and all of that stuff, please think about shopping in my Etsy shop or hit that little blue support button in my YouTube channel's homepage. Um, you need to be in a browser or on a PC to see it. You can also shop over at Redbubble. I have a Redbubble store. All of those things are listed on my Facebook uh, my website, um, GinaBerrans.com. The links are all in the description below. And don't forget the most important thing. Go out and have a nice day and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. And I'll see you later. Bye.